Hey, Erin, I hope you're able to make me a presenter from this because the link I had didn't work. So I'm going through the main link. Okay. Do you want to try it now? Sure. Okay. Uh, you see a bug? See it. Cool. I'm not sure why the other link didn't work. I don't know, but I figured I'd give this a go. In worst case scenario, we could figure it out as we go. Yeah. Are you under hurricane conditions? Um, we keep going in and out of like tropical storm warnings okay. and massive downpours. So, like if my power goes out, that's probably just because we have a massive downpour. Um, lot the wind and it's kind of calm right now, but it looks kind of scary. And my super annoying neighbors are home, so there could be a Latin dance party at any time, and okay. it kind of power my voice. <laughs> I'll limber up. <sighs> yeah. But my Wi-Fi connection at home is better than that at work. So, you know. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Jason's laughing over there. Oh, yeah, got to have fun in these oh, days yeah. of all the chaos in the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, the folks upstairs don't like it when I ask them to turn their music down so I can work. That's, that's really unfortunate. But, you know, shit happens. Yeah. Getting some bugs ready for you guys. Can't really see it too well. There's bugs on here. Attempting to put bugs on here. Very, very tiny bugs. Let me sure I got them. Nope, not there. There's one. Okay. Oh, there's a very active one. If Jody's actually there, she's gonna love that her little um card showed up quite a bit. Nice. Hi. Hey, I use this thing all the time. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good to measure things. Yeah, so much so that our extension office decided to make some that have citrus bugs on them. Nice. They didn't like the bed bugs showing up in all the pictures. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times people are like, I don't even want to touch that. I think Jonathan made some with ticks. Oh, so. well. I may have to get some of those. Hey, Aaron, did you find out anything about polls? Yes, I asked Brian about the polls. I have used Zoom polls, but I haven't launched them myself. And so I'm not sure if we'll, if we can have access to that or if it's just Brian as a host, unless he shares privileges. I'm, I'm waiting to hear back, but he is, he's teaching right now and he's going to be a few minutes late, but I hope that He'd be able to answer you today. Are you used to using polls? No, oh. but we, <laughs> huh. um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, only when I've created the Zoom, because then I've created the polls before the Zoom. Yeah. I don't know if Jason or Lauren have done Zoom polls. I have, but it was always created in advance of the presentation. Yeah. So it was right. loaded. Um, basically, we had it because we just had a workshop a couple weeks ago where you sent all of our questions to the workshop host. And there was, it was, I guess they put it into the screen. I never actually put it in the screen, they did it. Oh, okay. And I could just hit the polls thing at the bottom and it would pop up and people had a certain amount of time to interact and then they took it away. Yeah, you have to make them beforehand, I think, Jody. Okay, because, okay, well, we have some questions. I just don't know where to make them or if I could send them to Brian or... Yeah, because right now I don't see an app. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah I think he has to set it up. As the host, okay. I'm pretty sure he has to set them up. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's but no it's big deal if not. Product. Yeah. We were yeah. just thinking like interaction, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? 
Well, I, it's, it's a skill that I haven't learned yet. I know how to take the polls, but I don't know how to launch them. So actually learning how to do that would be useful. As host, they'll go come up in your screen. Like if you have the share screen, record all those buttons at the bottom, you'll get this little, what literally looks like a bar graph at the bottom. You click it, it pops up and you can quick click which question you want to launch. Okay. And then you can show results or you can not show results. I like to show the results because we are doing some test ID stuff with it. Yeah. So. I'm already learning. Yeah. Oh, I learned a ton on that workshop because normally we do that one in person and it was an interesting transition. Yeah, I suppose most of us will be doing virtual delivery this winter. So having something to break up the time would be good. Yes. Plus, if you're teaching about like a specific bug and there's like some character you want them to really pay attention to, then it's a good time to kind of get an assessment of did you actually teach it? Were yeah. they interested it or were paying attention to it? Yeah. Can you guess this fly based on the weird third hind leg hair? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were teaching extension agents, so they, they were a little more invested in that type of stuff. Yeah. Parcel formula, like zoom up with your scopes. Oh, you can do, yeah, you can get some cool um, images with these. I was playing around with this earlier today, try to get some better pictures from some stuff I grabbed at the lab. Brian challenged us to make a short video during our first session. So I was like totally laser focused into, you know, shooting some video and stuff. And I was like, oh, I hope I didn't miss, you know, I was like, oh, I hope I didn't like over focus and like totally miss the second session. So oof. that would be sad. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a bummer. It's fun. And I'm going to show you lots of bug pictures. <laughs> Who doesn't love bug pictures? Especially weird stuff from Florida. <laughs> yeah. You got your cat to join you as your uh, co-host, Lauren? You never know. I mean, their kitty, one of their kitty trees is right behind me because we're, we're kind of living in a smallish apartment to <laughs> pay some money to buy a house at some point. Um, they, they like to just kind of appear. Like one joined during Brian's presentation earlier and Oliver sitting there. Zeke is the best meeting crasher and he will, you'll see butt if he does that. So hopefully he doesn't do that. You'll get an extra 20% on the rating if you have a cat in it. So you got you to gotta have your cat incorporated somehow. Right. Well, the good I'm thing is be... I really tired them out at lunchtime. So they're both passed out and hoping that they stay passed out in the other room. <laughs> but Zeke is fascinated by the, by the USB microscope and he like wants to play with it. And I'm trying to keep him away from it because it is not my personal property. And he's still <laughs> a kitten and he chews. <laughs> Jody, is this an official virtual background for the ESA meeting that you're using? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. I think so. It was in the... Yeah, it was in their download. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I saw a lot of people putting like their presentations on with this background. I'm like, how did... I didn't... I wasn't that creative. I didn't know I was supposed to do it that way. I don't think they actually intended to do that, but I snagged it for um, a symposium for Monday night. Cause I was like, oh, that looks really legit. Yeah, it's nice. Well, I do have the, the one that tell us how we did, but I don't want someone to tell me how I did when I'm not doing anything yet. It'll just be like, you're boring <laughs> and you'll get it. So yeah, I'm trying to remember. No, I keep getting it wrong. I like, cause it's oh, a mirror. Yeah. So like, 
Use this QR code. Oh, so my hand goes away. Oh, there we go. But you know what? That gave me a, a big idea with um, like having a Google form for all my virtual programs that has that there all the time. And it's, it will just say like, what is the date of this program? What was the topic? And then, then I could collect date, like the same kind of data. So yeah. you guys have shared that with me and that's going to be kind of big. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that would be easier than asking our extension staff to sit there and like type surveys in. Yeah, because now I'll just be like, we don't like you. And I'll just know right it, away. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure if you're like me, you have to do a lot of bean counting at the end of the calendar years, you know, for reporting. So it's just a lot of summarizing. This year, of course, there weren't as many things going on, but yeah, any way to help that, it's good. Yeah, I'm not so good at the bean counting. That would probably help out. Especially because you're tenure track, aren't you, Lauren? I am. Um, and my three-year review is coming up this spring. Admins love those outputs. I know, which is why I'm really excited that we have an amazing extension office here. We have like our own extension manager. Wow. She is all citrus and she's awesome. And I hope she never leaves us. Because <laughs> she makes me look really good. Oh, wow. That's nice. I'm jealous. Kind of spoiled. All right. Well, it's one o'clock. We're going to get started. This is our second chair fair uh, for the ESA um, meeting this year. It's all virtual. My co-organizer, co-moderator, Brian McCornack, will be joining us shortly, but he teaches this semester. So he'll be jumping in in a few minutes. So I just wanted to let everybody know out there in Zoom world that this session is going to be recorded. So um, Anything that happens on the main screen will be recorded and that we're going to share it with uh, an archived version of ESA. So if people couldn't watch it live, they can watch it on demand. So um, just to let you know about that. And um, I'm not sure how Lauren feels, but we, we kind of hope it's a open interactive session. Jump in with your questions, your comments, your experiences. So it's not like Lauren's talking at us for an hour, which she could do easily, but we want to make it as interactive as possible. So Lauren, I just say, take it away. Thank you so much for helping us out. Hey, no problem. Thank you for inviting me that I can actually participate for once. This is very exciting. I'm usually in meetings all day. Yeah. Um, and I probably won't be checking my Twitter till afterwards. So good luck. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Let me change this. I can get into presenter mode. Oh, no, I don't want that one. Sorry. The joys of three screens. All right, so I am going to talk to y'all today about something that we have been exploring quite a bit in my lab, actually, even pre-pandemic. Um, realized that the cost investment in some of these USB microscopes was actually better than buying stuff just intended to go on the road constantly for extension as far as buying the whole microscope and the whole setup. And then it turns out they want to be really great for research, too. So we're really excited about that. Um, and they're better than some of my research scope, which is good and bad, I guess. And yeah, you totally see a cat tree popping in back there because I don't have a cool green screen. Maybe I need to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, anytime you're working in pest management, a lot of the pests are really tiny and they're really hard to see. And um, if you're anything like me, you probably don't like, especially right now, the grower is getting right up on you, right next to you, not wearing a mask because most of them don't wear masks because um, they're outside. Apparently that logic still works for some people. So anyways, we've moved over to doing some more work with these USB scopes to help growers see what's on their trees and on their fruit. Um, and for reference, this was from about a month ago, some really gnarled up leaves that I got called out to look at um, in citrus. And there's only a couple things that do this. So let's, come on, we gotta move forward. Okay, there we go. So, um, if your arthropod of interest is big, like the sweet Katie did, your cell phone or any old camera is great. This was from one of the state parks about a month and a half ago when we got a break for some rain down here in Florida. Um, she's out there chomping away on some beauty berry, cool shot. They're also a pest in our system and they're a pest in a lot of systems because Katie did and all their other orthopteran friends like eat everything under the sun. But when you have a really tiny arthropod, you got a problem. It's really hard to take a good picture with your cell phone unless you have an amazing cell phone and some of those cameras are quite good. Um, or if you're a photographer and have all those lenses and then it's just clunky. Um, so 
Uh, the example I put on here for y'all is actually, this was brought in to figure out what the heck was going on with, uh, can you see my pointer? All right, these guys right here, they thought they had some new disease, something really weird going on. This is actually a predatory fungus and it feeds on scales and white flies. Um, so this is actually Sonia species. And you know, this was my cell phone on top of the lab microscope. And this was before we invested in the USB microscopes before I discovered how wonderful they are. Um, and so this was like the best picture I could get. And as you can see, it's really just not that great. Like lining up your cell phone to the microscope eyepiece. Some people are quite good at it. I am not. And my hand shakes. And then you get the funky lens glare right here. Yeah, I totally picked the bad picture on purpose because you can see the glare. You can see some of these problems um, inherent in doing this. And if you try to video like me, your hand shakes all over the place and it just is a really bad video. You're going to make people seasick. So you have some problems with that. And so another option that we started investing in, this was actually the extension program in general at my research station. Um, we had a bunch of uh, microscopes that we used for extension purposes and we bought some cameras to go along with them. And these are actually great. The eyepiece cameras, cameras are really wonderful for blowing up really tiny things. Um, this is a recently established invasive species in Florida, the Lebic mealybug. It's quite destructive. And so we're one of our main areas of research. You can actually see one of our cool little outputs from our extension office here. Uh, these little bitty baby crawlers, which hopefully I'll be able to show you in a little bit, are basically if you were to shake out a pepper shaker, they're like a grain of pepper with legs. They're really hard to see and hiding against tree bark that is near impossible to see. So, you know, we need to have ways to help growers see what they can't see. And in a lab, this is fine and dandy, but there's one big hesitation. If you're a newer extension person or researcher, this costs. This unit alone, this camera was about $1,000 plus the adapter. And if you don't already have the microscope and the light source and the camera or, and the video screen, that's gonna get really expensive really, really fast. We also need to have a, a mouse to make everything talk. Which, you know, most of us have bits and pieces that lying around, so it may not be the worst thing. But we invested in some of these USB microscopes thinking that it might be a nice tool to take to the field so we can show growers because this thing is so darn small and even with the hand lenses, which most of us, every extension agent has, you know, this is not working out so with the black screen. Everybody has their little loop here. Loop. You know, this is great and dandy. I can see what I'm looking at. I know what I'm looking at, but the girls don't always know what they're looking at. And I'm just like, see that little dot? That little dot moves right there? And they're like, uh, yeah, sure. Uh-huh, something like that. All right, well, that, that's not going to work out so good for us. So we started looking at the use of these microscopes, showing the girls what the pest was and seeing um, if we could take it into the field. And so this is actually um, the, the same mealybug with the, the mama. So she's a, a gravid female and her big old oldest sac forming underneath her here. Um, and you can see some honeydew and you can see some crawlers walking around on her. And so we were pretty happy with the in-lab um, version of this. Even happier when this whole unit here that illuminates itself is, is just under $1,000. And so there's actually a huge range of, of prices in these microscopes, but I picked this one because I needed the specific size. I needed to be able to, to make these really small bugs very big and visible. Um, you can also get other things. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a, a computer like we did here. This was one of our lab spaces. We were trying to figure out how to work with this. Um, you can hook it to your phone or your tablet. Uh, you can also get the options of Wi-Fi wi uh, and different stands. And so I'll show you some of those in a little bit. And um, we used Dynalites just because that was what I had a little bit of experience with. I got to play with them at the ESA meeting in Vancouver and I really liked them. I was really impressed by them. And so I purchased a couple to play with in the lab and I have quite a few of them um, because they've been very easy to use. All right, so if you buy this or any other setup, you're gonna come get a bunch of stuff in your box and hey, looky, looky, a cool extension outfit from Nebraska. And if you guys see Jody's laughing because I got this from her. I don't know how many years ago, quite a few years ago. This little card is one of the most handy things I've ever gotten. And we are in the process of making one. And if you have an extension program, if you don't have something like this, seriously, you should make one. The growers love it. Homeowners love it. Extension agents love it. This thing's amazing. And it has uh, really stood up well. It's kind of, kind of, you can't really see it against me very well. Kind of beat up, but I use the heck out of it. It's great. Anyways, here's your USB microscope as it comes out of the box if you get a dyno light. And this little back piece here that has the little plug-in that goes to your computer. Oopsies. Sorry. 
uh, this can actually come off and you can get a Wi-Fi adapter with it. So I actually bought units that had Wi-Fi adapters with them so I could have them talk to my phone or my tablet in the field. And so you know, it's kind of small. It's really nice that it's small because it's very portable. And I think some, I think there's some action in the chat. I can't see it though, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep up with the questions uh, for you, Lauren, and we're doing okay so far. Okay, cool. Um, I don't have a whole lot of slides. I was just gonna talk through some of this stuff show you guys some cool images and you know if i need to restart at another point in the in the, the session or show more pictures i will um so here's what it looks like when you take it apart is there's um i'm trying to put with my hand that's not gonna work there's these little buttons on the side and uh in theory you push them in and it releases easily but uh, i put an asterisk here because if you have arthritis it doesn't release easily um, it took me a good 20 minutes to get that off the first time i've, I've got to have an old, old injury to my hand so that did not work very easily. Um, but once I got it off, flipping the DynoLite Wi-Fi on it was really easy, which is great. And then you basically pair this little guy with your phone and there's instructions that come with it. Um, and then it'll talk straight to your phone. And again, I'm trying to show you guys, this is pretty small, which is very convenient. And I'm probably embarrassing Jody because I really like this card, but it's pretty cool. And I mean, bed bugs, I love a chance to make people cringe. So then you get your little USB microscope with Wi-Fi and this baby's ready to go to the field. And this is what we normally take when we go out to meet with growers. And I have to apologize that I have no pictures of me in the field with growers because I don't always take somebody with me or I think to ask somebody to take pictures. Um, but they have, so far have been really positive responses with this because they can see these critters that are blown up on your phone or tablet. I usually just take my phone because um, I don't have a tablet for work. I just have my personal tablet and I just don't remember to take a check something out from the station. Um, so what's also been really cool during our lovely research pause, quarantine, shutdown, whatever the heck you want to call it, is that this has actually enabled a lot of people to work from home. Uh, I was able to send some microscopes home with other people, but we've been able to keep some of the research going at home and our identifications at home. This is actually a laboratory setup where we were trying to figure out how best to set it up in, in the lab to take some videos of this, in, of this new bug because we're trying to do a little bit of behavioral work to understand how it does, what it does, so we can break it basically, so we can figure out how to take care of it. Um, and so this is on a clamp stand. You can't see the stand very well. And I, I do have to apologize. I had to go tarp all my equipment today. So I didn't snap a picture before we tarped everything. We were, we're under a tropical storm warning and our buildings are quite old. So sometimes things leak. Um, but this is basically just a little clamp on a stand there is zero weight to the base of this. So you should know that it has no weight and it will flip over. So we want to put in books or this is a, a container of modeling clay on the back to weight it down. And you can also buy extender poles. So um, in our current setup, we have had before I tore everything down today, um, an extender pole that would take that up another like foot and a half or so. So we could use larger plants and we could focus in on a specific area. And one of the things that we were able to do is actually get some video footage of these mealybugs mating. Um, so we can, we're trying to figure out when they mate so we can figure out if we can interrupt that mating cycle and reduce the population, which I'm gonna plug David Olabee's PhD research. He's got a talk right now um, that is available where he's talking about some of this work. And so that's your basic pole and clamp. You got a big old gooseneck, which I actually have set up on my desk right now. And I'll flip over to that in a few minutes. Um, this one's pretty cool unless you have like no ridge on the side of your desk because it has a little clamp down here and it's got to have some space to clamp. Um, but it's nice because it stays where you put it. You can actually get some good images from it. And then there's a tripod, which uh, if you have a kitten, you're probably going to lose the rubber pieces off the base of it because he totally stole my little rubber piece. But it's a nice little setup if you want to get up close and personal. I don't love the tripod, to be honest. This is just not the best setup I've ever used. It's a little loose. Um, it's really hard to tighten things down, but it also lets you get into some different nooks and crannies and configure it. So it's got to mess with it a little bit. Lauren, can I interrupt? Um, we had a question about, uh, you mentioned Wi-Fi for this scope. Um, yes. Is there a way to broadcast it to, like if <coughs> farmers or growers had their own phone, could they see what you're looking at real time? Yeah, actually, if you, um, let me see, there's my phone. Ah, sorry. Don't know if it's gonna show up. Let me turn it on. I'm gonna get out of this thing and probably take my background off because it's actually really hard to see me with. Uh, 
I really got to get a green screen. Those are so cool. Uh, no, okay. So yeah, monster kitty tree behind me. Um, this little back, there you are. Um, this little guy, it has a button. I have, as you can see, I have my set up over here. So you can watch me struggle and it is amusing. You can go ahead and laugh, it's totally fine. Um, so here's my little guy. A sweet, sorry. This is what happens. And there's some problems. You squeeze it, it clips off. Back piece comes with a little protector so you don't mess it up. And there's a charging port. Clips on. Where's the button? There's a button. There's a little button right here. Can I see some blinky lights? All right, the green it is on. And then I go over to my phone. My phone. And my, I hope you guys can see this. I'm going to put it right next to the screen. When it shows up, when it shows up, it's just slow. Oh, let's be talking, it's lit up. There we go. You can actually. That's not so pretty, but you can flip over to where it says Dino Light. So that doesn't actually connect to the internet, but it is, it is Wi-Fi between the unit and your phone. And so then you can actually project images to your phone, um, which is really nice. And I, I, I just got this phone and it does not like the app yet. So I'm gonna have to mess with it a little bit. My other phone died a really horrendous death last week. Um, so this is uh, learning to use the new phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and rehook this this guy back to the plant stand because I can get a better picture um, right now just because my phone's being goofy. Lauren, I'm wondering if, uh, I'm not sure if Amara got, her, got the question answered, but could you broadcast it to other phones or to, if they're on the same Wi-Fi network? Yeah, all you have to do is give them the Wi-Fi network. And it does, it's not like a long range Wi-Fi, so they'd have to ask it have to be within somewhat close proximity. Okay. Um, I haven't played around super far away and I used to just use my own phone Yeah. Um, because it takes forever for the growers to kind of get all yeah. set up. So I just, yeah, I just use my own phone. Makes okay. life easier. Thanks. But the tablets are a nice option. Our extension office has a couple tablets and they're going to set those up for us to use also um, with this, which is kind of cool. Is that all the questions for that? Okay. Um, let me go back over to sharing. I actually had a reason for having it on the stand, but that's cool. You guys got to see how challenging that can be. Um, it feels like you're going to break it the first time you go to set that up. I really thought I was going to break it. I'm like, oh God, it's a thousand dollars. I just broke it. I just broke it, but it's fine. It just takes a little oomph to get it separated. All right. Go forward. So I went, I took one of my boxes from my lab. I do have a lot of, I have a 65% uh, extension appointment, which means I'm out talking to growers and master gardeners a lot. So I've got a lot of these boxes that I take out. Um, and so I've actually got that box sitting right here. And I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that some of the, the magnification that we could do with this. And that is the ring stand clamp right here. And yes, I have a moldy weevil um, and my temporary lab space is very humid and all my stuff is getting moldy and it's very frustrating. So these are little um, alley rodents, so little little white flies, and you know those, those are super duper tiny little babies. But I could you could get a nice image of it. This is actually what the interface looks like on your computer with the Dino Capture. When you actually take live footage, it's like a smaller little square over here, but you can blow it up to look at things better. And you get some really nice quality pictures. Um, the hardest part for me is that my hands shake, and so I like the stands because it takes the shakiness out of my hand. Um, I'm actually was really looking at those tripods that Brian was talking about this morning. So I kind of, kind of got me have to invest in something like that. That looks really cool. And these are <clears throat> some more, some more very, very tiny things that we can make much bigger. Um, and these are very small scales. If you go back, these are the, these little babies down in here. So the, the red scale is here. The little black, little white light I showed you is right there. You can really blow things up nicely for extension purposes. Um, and one of the things that we've had a lot of fun with is actually 
sending it to a projector and projecting big old images on the wall, which is really great if you're doing outreach to kids, um, especially if there's some predators and with some aphids and just let them decimate the aphids on live bug TV. It works out really well. Even the adults really like it. I've been really pleasantly surprised by that. Um, and actually, this is another really great um, thing that we're able to do with this is you know, we're limited in how many people can be in our lab spaces at any given time. So that damage I showed you guys on the very first slide, I had a follow-up in another grove really close to there and same damage, but we actually caught the culprit. And it is something in the genus Skirtothrips. I think there's two potential critters. We think we know who it is, but it's been spent, sent off now for diagnostics. But this base image was able to get a confirmation of it, at least in that genus. And I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but I'm not going to say it till I know for certain because I, I want to make sure the state ag folks agree with me. Um, but that little critter is about five millimeters in length. So um, I was able to actually get some better images once I killed it off and it wasn't running around the tree, but it, or around the leaf. It was kind of fun to try to get it on the leaf though. Um, so I did want to point out that dynamite is not your only option. Um, I know Gwen Pearson really likes her celestrum and she has some older microscopes and she's got some really nice images from them. Um, I looked online the other day and there's Amscope and Vernier. There's lots of other ones, but there's definitely lots of really crappy ones in addition to really good ones. So you want to make sure if you're going to buy something like this that you get your money's worth. So I suggest checking with other people who use them, what they've used, what they like, what they don't like. And also um, going online and reading the reviews. Some of these really suck. Um, and I've actually was really, really happy with one of the things I had some tech issues at first when we got them from DinoLite and I just called the people and they walked me through the couple issues we had. We had no problems um, getting it all arranged. It was, it was a user error. It was not equipment issues, it was user. Um, the one thing that I wanted to point out is that most of these brands have a range in prices and in their magnification. So yes, my scope's a thousand dollars, but they also have ones that are like $500. And it really depends on how much you wanna be able to magnify a specimen what your purposes are. And so um, when I was at the Dynalite booth in Vancouver, I sat and talked to a rep for a while talking about what my needs were and what my purpose of this was gonna be. And they really helped me narrow down what my best options were. So that was really nice to call and have, or to sit there and talk to him. And I would assume you could probably have that same phone call because their representatives are really helpful. And I would hope most of the companies would be similar with that. And lots of them have their own stands. Um, I, would suggest after my own experience of trying to be cheap, not buying the off-brand stands, they don't work out so good for you. Uh, you can have all sorts of problems. If you're really crafty or like really techy and have access to a 3D um, printer, you can probably make your own stand, which might be even better than any of these, but I have none of the above. All right, Lauren, so I, can... uh, so I have a question, a follow-up question from a comment. Um, with yeah. your Dynalite, can you record video as well? I can, actually. Okay. Yeah, so you have to go into the programming for it, which let me pull up Dynalite and share that screen. This has actually been really fun because we've been figuring out how to share longer periods of videos. Um, can you see my Dynalite screen? Awesome. So, actually, I, let me grab somebody who's alive. But uh, while I'm doing this, you can see okay, there's camera, video, timed video. I haven't used these two yet, so I can't tell you what those are. Um, but we have been able to get long periods of time, like days of video recording, trying to get certain behaviors um, on, on tape. Try to get somebody who's moving for you. I assume this works with uh, PC or Mac type computers, phones. So I have PC and Pixel. Okay. So I know they work with that. Okay. I would assume the other ones because they have iOS information for for, um, for the iPhones. Okay, they'll go. Oh. That's not good. There's probably crawlers walking around my desk somewhere. Um, Good thing I have no hosts nearby. <laughs> All right, yeah, you can totally get live video on here. Um, I just don't have anybody kicking in here to play with. Unfortunately, this is the pleasure of doing the presentations from home. I don't always bring my friends home, but I do have this super duper cool fungus from the field from the other day. Okay, now to get in focus. We're gonna have some HTC shake on here. It does take some time to get used to like how 
Remove your specimens. Fungus killed Asian citrus psyllid. One of the coolest things I've seen in a while. Got a couple of them the other day. Um, but yeah, you can get all sorts of, I mean, these guys are really tiny. So this is some decent magnification on it. You can go from that guy and I think he's heard a cat toy go off because somebody's waking up. And I'm sorry if you get a cat butt in a few minutes, it probably will happen. They're kind of obnoxious like that. To you, you can get like, where are you at, buddy? This is one of the challenges with this particular stand is that it's very stiff. Um, and I'm using the gooseneck stand right now. And it just takes a little while to get used to the magnification and the zooming on these guys. So I just gotta find you a bug at the start. Let's see there's a bug on there. Lauren, do you know if it's possible just to buy the base that you were talking about? If someone else has another type of scope? Um, you mean like the stands or the yeah, Wi-Fi? I think, I think the stand. Oh, yeah. I would make sure that's compatible though. Okay. So um, I think you showed like that gooseneck, and you showed like the. Um, yeah, the, I'll put that on again. I see in a moment. I'm not perfect with these guys. It takes me a while to get them in focus. But does that with any any microscope? So yeah, if I want to give a presentation on little leaf notcher, there's a little leaf notcher right in front of me. You can see the nice detail on them. Um, <clears throat> we actually have a, a newer, a more recently established pest weevil in this region, and it looks a lot like this one. So we've been getting a lot of play with this particular set of beetles because um, in the others, ah, I'll come back here, you. In the other one, they have a slightly different ridging right here. It's just a slightly different ridging pattern. And we don't know if that's going to be a problem or not in citrus. So every time somebody sees it, they freak out. And we just, half the time it's a little leaf notcher, like, no, actually, here's your ridge. And we know it's a little leaf notcher. Um, but yeah, for those uh, for those rings, for those stands, you can buy them online. So what I did, whew, moth, <clears throat> moth balls kill me here. Um, I went on the Dynolite site and I found the ones that I thought I would like and I read a bunch of reviews on them. And then I, um, they don't sell directly from their website. You have to actually buy from a third party. And so I wound up using one of their third party sellers. <coughs> and um, actually Amazon sells a lot of their products. You just have to know which ones you're looking for. And if you go on there and find like the, on um, this pole clamp one, which I quite like for the lab. It's very sturdy. Well, aside from the base, not having any weight to it. This is actually very sturdy as far as staying still once you have something to weight the base down. Um, there's an extender pole, so you can add that extender pole. And it was a lot cheaper to buy the extender pole on Amazon than through the company that sells them for DinoLite. And so if you're on a budget looking around for those things, it's really important um, to find those other options of, of how, to, how to make that work for you. Lauren, do you ever feel like you have to add supplemental lighting to, for any of your either photos or videos? In the lab, no. In my apartment, yes. <laughs> As you can see, it's not the best lit, um, but we have that super bright fluorescent lighting in the lab. And so that works out really well. If I had more lights here, that would probably be better, but we just don't have them at this apartment. And they... The light bulbs are kind of crappy in here. I'm not gonna lie, I hadn't really thought about that until recently. I started doing more of these, um, but that's easily solvable with a couple of LED lights around the lab or on the around your desk. You can buy cheap LEDs at Walmart. Um, we actually just bought some cheap LEDs for our regular microscopes because our expensive lights burned out, and I could buy an LED one that is adjustable for 20 bucks versus a $300 expensive fancy microscope light. So. Um, it's easy enough to adjust for those things. The other thing you can do is turn off all the lights and then you'll actually get a better image sometimes just with the bug light. I can turn off the lights in here so it's kind of dark outside. I turn off my lights. Just playing around with this last night actually. Yes, my desk is black, by the way, so it's, it's an underside there. 
It was an adjustment on the height too. You can get some better images too, just by turning off all the other lights. If you're in a dark area, this is actually a lot better image than with my light on here. Um, and that's your same silhouette with all the lovely, we think, I guess they're probably Ophiocordyceps coming out of them. That was a suggested species of, of fungus to me and it would make sense, the structure looks right. Um, but yeah, that's another option. And either you can illuminate the heck out of it or you can kill the other lights and just have the light from this guy. It's actually pretty bright on it. Yeah. Um, but everything we've done in the lab, we have all the, the fluorescent lights and we've been able to videotape um, interactions between certain predators as well as mating interactions. Um, unfortunately, the one predator I really wanted to see, I never got it to actually do its job, which is really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot you can do with these guys and the videos are, are definitely cool. Um, it's a nice option. And then if you don't want it to save this locally, a trick that one of my, that my grad student figured out is how to actually save it um, onto your computer hard drive so that it can, can continually loop instead of just replacing the data within this little local um, setup. And I have to apologize, I haven't done it. He's the one who figured it all out. And I didn't have to figure it out because it's already done, I just clicked the button. So maybe someday I'll have to figure that out or have him teach me because, you know, grad students don't stick around forever, unfortunately, for good or for bad, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. uh, Lauren, I'm wondering when, when you take photos, does it capture any annotations if you wanted to keep, say, the scale or if you could make some notes on the image? Is that possible? I haven't actually tried that. Um, I have used it with like that little scale that I showed you earlier. Um, like I often will pop in this little, I'm not sure what it makes it, they'll pop in a little scale like this next to it. Okay. Um, there is a software program that I've been told you can use, but if you look, I'm assuming you can still see my screen. Um, there's different functions up here and you can actually put scales on it. I just haven't had to use this yet. Okay. Um, but it's kind of cool. I mean, it, it, I think it's a nice option as far as being able to, to measure your critters. Um, and as far as annotations go, I usually take, whoa, wrong button. I usually take images and put them into PowerPoint before I put any, um, lost my video, uh, <laughs> before I put any annotation directly on the images. But I think you, I think you probably can do that. I mean, there's, there's text up here options. So you can okay. go in and write stuff. So if you wanted to say draw an arrow or something to this important feature, oh, it looks like you can. Okay. If I could type, yep. Okay. And then. Just wondering if you're like broadcasting it, you know, if they could see it real time, you making some key notes. Yeah, I okay. actually haven't tried that yet. I really like that idea though, and I'm fully gonna do it because that okay. sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, preferably where I'm not on my, my desk that moves too easily. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot you can play with in here. It has a lot of different features on it. Um, you can magnify your critter out as much as you want to. You see this magnification in the top left corner. You can add, add some of that in here. Um, you can blow it up a little. Mm -hmm. really look at your critter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun, I hate to say toy, but there are some toy elements to this. I mean, there's, there's definitely on the on the learning and extension and outreach portion of things, this is one of the funner things I think that we get to work with is to blow up teeny tiny bugs and teeny tiny interactions and make them where everybody can see them really easily. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's really, oh, I still miss the fungus. <laughs> I think it's really fun. You, you sort of addressed it before, but how difficult is the installation of this Danolite software on your phone or computer? It's super easy. Um, the uh, the little booklet. Do I have one of them? It comes with a little, little book. It walks you through everything, both the scope and the, the Wi-Fi walk you through everything. And it was, you know how sometimes you get something and they, they only tell you like two out of ten steps you need to figure out. This had every single step. Okay. And for some most of them it had images too, which was really great because I hate those ones that miss the steps in between because I never quite figure them out and I get mad and cranky and that's just never a fun place to be. Other questions that you guys might have for Lauren? Hello, me, I have a question. Yeah. 
thank, thank you for your presentation. I wanted to know that um, how much or is the magnitude of this uh, microscope that you are using? How much is the, how much it magnifies? Yes. So it depends on which microscope you get. Um, I, let me turn my light back on, I can probably pull. The one that I have here is pretty high power. There's actually a better one even than this. Let's see. Don't remember the exact sizes on here. I have to apologize. I don't know on this one precisely. I do have a little packet that came in. Um, but there's different different magnifications depending on your needs. And so what I would suggest is actually, you know, calling calling whatever company you're thinking about buying from and asking them, having a conversation with other representatives. Um, when, when I look at this one at ESA, they had a little, um, like the backing of a watch. And so I could see all the teeny tiny gears move. So I knew that it was gonna get the teeny tiny images that I needed to get from my critters. And so if you need bigger things or smaller things, they can really walk you through it. But I mean, you can kind of zoom out a little bit and lose my critter again. But this, this one, the, the model I have is definitely better for smaller stuff. If you wanted to have bigger, bigger bugs and you'd have to get a different model of a little microscope than I have. Okay, I got it. Thank you so much. I thought I had more questions. Oh, there's... So Lauren, this is Jody. Hey. So uh, on that picture there, it says what it's magnified at, right? On the top there. Oh my God, your eyes are better than me. Well, I was like, <laughs> so, I was like <laughs> so if they ask, that's what it is. But so when you do, do the growers look at these images on your tablet in your phone or their yeah. own? Because they would need uh, the software, right? Yeah, they would need to download to look at it, but I just show them on my phone, which I mean, the university right. pays part of my phone bill, so that's part of my extension. Oh, program. that's good. Can yeah, I mean, I could either carry two phones or just right. like say I don't care about personal stuff and have them pay a portion of my personal phone, and I'm I'm gonna lose one, so I carry one phone, and I figure whatever it's extension stuff. I think that's good. I'm not judging. You should <laughs> take what you can get. Can you do a, a screenshot then of that if you need a picture and if like a grower would request an image? Yeah, you can actually screenshot it and then send it via text message. Okay, cool. So, and I, I was hoping to show you that, but my new phone is just not playing well with the app. So I don't know if it needs an update or what. Um, turns out when you get the, brand, the newest version of a phone, sometimes the apps haven't quite caught up to it. My old phone did that great. And I was going to show you guys that had it not died. I should have taken pictures of it. Lauren, someone asked, uh, Amy asked, is the magnification on your screen automatically detected or do you manually input that? Um, as far as up here, I'm assuming they're saying, um, there's a little magnified, there's a, uh, let me pull this off here. I'm sorry, you're a little seasick on that. There is, go back to this. When you're actually working with your scope, that, I'm gonna have to unplug it so it doesn't, the light doesn't mess it all up. There's actually a little bar here. And as you turn the bar, it changes the magnification of your microscope. And then it registers it on the image as you're working with it. And so, I mean, I know there's probably some discrepancies between your actual magnification and what your bug is. And that's why it's nice to have a scale. And so that's why I like, I, again, I, I really like the little card that I have. I just pop it in there. Um, whenever I'm doing images for growers, I usually throw a penny in there because they know the size of a penny. And that's my scale for anything I take pictures of for a grower. The cards are for me or for research normally, but the, or for the extension agents. Um, but anytime I take pictures for a grower, I always put a penny and I keep a penny in my pocket just, or my wallet just for that. So you're, you're physically uh, adjusting the magnification on the base and then it just yeah. goes up on the, on the, what you see on the screen. Okay. Yes. So, so Lauren, I missed, did the one millimeter bar, does that show up automatically as well? You had that on the last picture. So I haven't actually had to use that before. The 
because most of my stuff is more just directly focused towards the guys when I'm out there with them. But there was a one millimeter bar on here. And you could, you could change it to inches, is that right, Lauren? Yes, let me flip back over to having that screen. My farmers don't think in millimeters, metric. Mine don't either. <laughs> That's why actually I actually use the penny because it's just so much easier for everything. Um, but yeah, you can do inches, millimeters, or I'm not really sure what ML is supposed to be, but millimeters and micrometers. That's mils, it's a thousandth of an inch. Oh, okay, I totally wouldn't have gotten that, thank you. Like if you have plastic garbage bags, they say what mils they are. <laughs> In the U.S. anyway. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense now. Um, but yeah, the guys will think in inches and um, it reflected over here to be in inches. So if you were gonna make all your measurements, you could do it that way. Um, but we don't, whenever we're doing measurements, like real measurements, it's always just for, it's for research purposes. And there's, there's nice ways to put tools in there to kind of measure that over. Um, I normally will take all my images that I'm doing research and actually put it into image J to get better, more specific images, uh, um, measurements, because I haven't actually used this for measurements before, though I've heard very good things about it. I just, image J is what I'm used to, and so I haven't flipped over because I'm old. And teaching me new things sometimes takes a while. But this toy was fun. Uh, we had a question from Emily. She asked if you had a favorite top piece for your dino light have you found that certain pieces work better for certain arthropods i'm not sure what top piece means is that just like the front end of the scope emily because they actually come with um oh the white piece she said these oh okay so yeah it's, i just really play with them a little bit i for the field the one that i have on there right now is kind of what i leave on there but if you wind up getting these, they come with this whole little container of, of top pieces. I kind of like that shape name. Um, and several of them, well, like little clear guys, and they have different purposes, different filtering purposes. And I think it, it's partially user. This actually blocks out quite a bit of light, which is nice for images. Um, and then you gotta, okay, I obviously haven't used this one because the blue tape's still on it. <clears throat> and there's yeah, some like them, Lauren. Pardon? Do your cats like them? Uh, Emily's cats try to steal hers. Yeah, there's a reason they're sitting in a box and not out because uh, an eight month old cat rules my life right now and he takes everything, including the bottoms of the um, little bendy tripod. So I didn't know what that little white piece was until I realized that was until it went off my tripod. It's like, oh, I'm a little jerk. But he chewed the crap out of it. So now it's not really functional. Uh, but yeah, I. The one I have on here is just the one that I use a lot in the field because it's easy and it blocks out enough light, but still lets that in enough light that you get a nice image. And I, I don't know what the different names of them are. They probably, oh, there are names actually. Let's see how much I, I flip, flip things out. Inside the box, there's a little. So um, good tip, pro tip from Tim. He says that the solvent used to take off sticky cards uh, for sticky cards can uh, wash off the magnification on the unit. So be careful. That's good to know. Yeah, he found out That's the hard way. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. Perfectly I mean, clean. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, I mean, I've used that. I know that solvent very well. I smelled it for five years in my PhD. Um, it cleans most things off. So I'm not surprised to hear that either. But, you know, I do kind of like the smell of his nuclear. <laughs> I'm fast several years removed from it. But yeah, I think that would go with most solvents. Be careful what you wash them with because you're going to you take the, the, the paint off. It's just, I mean, it's just paint that's on there with your labeling and there's a couple stickers here and there. But I haven't had that problem yet because I haven't gotten these gross and sticky cards quite yet. Um, most of the stuff that I'm looking for on the sticky card these days are so small I have to put it under my really high power back, high powered magnification microscopes. I miss my lady beetles. They're so much easier to see. Uh -huh. Great questions everybody. I'm wondering what else you have for Lauren. Yeah we've got a few more minutes here. I left plenty of time because I know not everybody gets the opportunity to work with these things. We should have set up a promo code with DinoLite, like sign up and, you know, buy I know, one. right? I thought about that afterwards. I was just like, wow, that, um, 
that wouldn't be the worst idea. I, but I do know there's other brands. I just, I happened to interact with them and I really liked this microscope when I played with it. It was very easy, which easy is very important for me because time is money and hard stuff takes time. And we like it. Um, two of my technicians have been messing around with it quite a bit and trying to figure out how to get some better images. And I kind of have, I have a really nice EPG set up. So I have this dream of actually focusing these on the bugs as they're feeding actually the mealy bugs. Cause I want to look at how they feed and then how their ovisac grows with their feeding interactions. Cause I think that'd be cool. Um, and I think we could do it. I'm pretty sure with these we can do it cause we can get some really great images from them. It's just a matter of figuring out how to set up the, the Faraday cage correctly where everything is grounded. So we don't have any weird circuitry going on. So stay tuned for fun research. Yeah. So yeah, that's actually one of the things I was pleasantly surprised by <clears throat> is I had bought these for use with my growers initially because this bug was so damn small and it was new and we don't really know what we're looking at. They know other mealy bugs, they know other scales, but this thing is just weird and in between the two. And so to be able to actually go out there and show them what it looks like on their trees was really helpful. And they really liked it. They're very appreciative about it. We had another question about how it's powered, the DynaLite. Is it battery powered or is it through USB? Both? So right now what I have hooked up, I have the cord on it. So if I'm not going to the field, I have the cord on it. And I just keep it hooked up for the USBs. When you use the Wi-Fi on it, that does have a battery. I haven't had to actually charge it in the field, but I did make a habit of charging it before I take it out to the field. Um, and the charger, quite conveniently is a nice little um, USB charger. So if you have like a little USB one for your for your phone or if you have one of the newer cars that has the USB ports in it, which my new truck does, it's very exciting. You can actually charge this um, off of one of those chargers, which is very nice. Um, I, I really appreciate that it's easy. You don't have to carry around a bunch of batteries. Mm -hmm. So in short, I don't know the actual battery life because I haven't bumped into that issue yet. I try to be very proactive about that after having had several cameras die in the field because I forgot to charge them. Uh, lesson learned. But I feel field day, I haven't had a problem with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. What else have you guys got? Or is she getting oh, to other questions? Pictures on here. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty excited about this for um, diagnostic purposes. I think that it has a lot of potential there and that makes me very happy. Um, While she's loading that, I just wanna make sure that everyone knows we have a survey going out for all of our nine sessions. I put together some, I think, uh, it's some swag, some giveaways that are actually functional. So um, you can do them one at a time. You can do them all at once. We appreciate any of the feedback. For those of you in extension, you know, we have to do a lot of reporting of outputs and impacts. So we appreciate all that for this uh, share fair. And then I'll mail you out some fun stuff next month. So thank you. I'm sure, sorry, I, I didn't have more pictures on here for you guys. I'll help you have more questions. I'm really just putting the pool of solid back up. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I had, had prepared for you guys. That's okay. All. No, that's oh, great. That's I'm and so I think um, we didn't intentionally plan it this way, but um, tomorrow morning we have Jason Thomas, the insect hunter that is going to kind of build off this and yeah. he uses, of uh, course, plat hit the platform of YouTube to communicate to a wide range of people. So um, with using scopes and other, other types of technology. So yeah, if there isn't anything else for Lauren, we just really appreciate you. That was awesome. Uh, I learned a lot. You, you guys asked some good questions and, um, it will be available again uh, on demand, uh, through the ESA program. We hope later today or tomorrow, if you want to tell a friend, uh, or colleague about, about the session. So thank you guys for joining. Thanks again, Lauren. This was great. So thank you. And hope you can join some of our other sessions. Thanks, guys. Yep. Jason, exactly. I can't wait for that session tomorrow. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, it's not, awesome. it's not going to actually be, uh, I don't have scopes. I have endoscopes. So oh, it's endoscope. uh, Sorry. a oh. sneak preview of uh, this little device. You can stick it into places maybe you don't want to go. And cool. That's so have exciting. Some fun with them. <laughs> okay. I'm in handhills. Okay. And I'll let you guys dive under the hood of my YouTube channel. I'll let you guys look through my analytics if you want. You can go wherever you want. So Yeah, oh, an endoscope. Okay, excuse me. So it's going to be something that's a little okay. bit different than today. So that sounds great. Now i got to really push to get that assay finished in the morning so I can watch that. <laughs> but it kills the snails. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. We'll see Thanks, you hopefully Lauren. tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>